A very delightful evening to one and all present here. As we are moving into the Industry 4.0 era, we are gathered here to gain more knowledge and clarify our doubts regarding various domains in information technology. Today, we have Mr. Hari Santosh, AWS Cloud Architect, Honeywell, Germany, and Ms. Gayatri Shaker, Full Stack Developer, Philips, Germany, to guide us into the modern era of technology and with its various real-time applications on the topic, Landscape of Modern IT Application. Before we getting into this session, let me introduce the speakers of the day. Ms. Gayatri Shaker, currently working as a full stack developer in Philips with a field of expertise in full stack development. She has done her bachelor's degree in SSN College of Engineering. Ms. Gayatri has received an SBI award for her project along with four more projects. I welcome you, ma'am. Mr. Hari Santosh, currently working as AWS Cloud Architect in Honeywell, Germany, with various fields of expertise like web and app development, IoT, blockchain, machine learning, artificial intelligence, business intelligence, and cloud technologies. He has done his master's in University of Applied Sciences, MDEN layer, with specialization in Industry 4.0, and he has done his bachelor's in Anna University. Mr. Hari has also done nine projects and received an SBI award for his projects along with three more projects. It's a pleasure to have meet you here, sir. I welcome you both. All right. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful introduction, Srinidhi. We really, really appreciate it. So uh, with that out of the way, right, so we would like to dive right into our webinar today. So hello and again, everyone. So we really appreciate you all joining in oneness webinar today so we really thank oneness team for the opportunity given so today's topic is going to be a very very dynamic one so we will be discussing about the landscape of modern it systems and how it technologies can be used not just in it and informatics arena but overall in a general landscape so with that we will move on to the packed agenda for the day so I hope that uh, everybody is seeing my presentation. Oh, just a second, I think there are some technical issues. So my screen has frozen for a while. Sorry about that. All right, so I believe everybody can see the agenda for today. So, so uh, thanks to Srinidhi, we already have the speaker introductions. So today we have two hosts, myself along with my colleague Gayatri, who was kind enough to join us. So we will be giving a brief overview about ourselves, and then we will talk about the next generation IT systems. And then as Srinidhi alluded, right, so we will be discussing in depth about industry 4.0. So how we can use IT in manufacturing industries. So we will be discussing about real-time use cases how it can be leveraged in industries so we also will discuss about the major de development cycles which are getting involved in it's so we talked about the different models and we will be demystifying the it systems as a whole so after today's session when you go back happily right so you will have a key takeaways of what you have to do if you wanted to plan and have a long-term career in it so what will be the arenas which you will be focusing on so we will be discussing all and more in depth so we will also talk about the different technical stacks in web development so front end back end and middleware and then we will summarize everything together and we will discuss how we will put all those skill stacks for use in manufacturing and how everything fits in industry 4.0. So finally, we will discuss about the future of IT. So we can't end the conversation without talking about big data, AI and ML. So all these are not just buzzwords anymore. So it's super real. So we will be discussing about how they are making a difference currently in the industry as we speak. All right, so just again, a quick word of introduction about both of us. So myself, I'm Harishantosh. So like Srinidhi alluded, I'm currently now based out of Germany. I'm working for Honeywell. So primarily I'm building out machine learning solutions for forecasting their shop orders and all and more. 
So we also have our colleague Gayatri. I want Gayatri to quickly say a hi. So Gayatri, hi. if you can. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Harry. Uh, hi, guys. Myself, Gayatri Shekhar. I have close to seven years of experience in the IT development field. Uh, currently, I'm working for Philips in Germany. Uh, I am developing the software solutions for ultrasound machines, mostly for the healthcare providers. Thank you, Harry. Yeah, uh, thanks for the quick introduction, Gayatri. So with that out of the way, I would like to start our webinar by discussing about how the next generation IT systems is going to look like. All right. So when I when I discuss about this term IT, right? So most of you will only think that it's applicable for computer science and IT engineers. But is it really the case? So let's e explore for a moment right now, right? So we are right now living in a post corona time. So every business has been impacted in some way or the other. So everyone wanted to make you this opportunity to go digital. So we have industries who wanted to have their online presence. We have colleges and universities conducting lectures online and whatnot. So we can see that digital transformation is going to be something which will be available across every industrial sector. Let it be retail, healthcare, manufacturing, automotive, electrical, electronics. So everything will be somehow have a digital layer. So that's where we say that information technology just like how uh, how everybody will learn english as a normal language we we can pretty much say that everyone will be where everyone will be learning how to program irrespective of domain so this is going to be a universal skill which will be needed so that's what we wanted to start this presentation with so it will be the centerpiece because whatever the industry which we go right so it is going to become a key pillar and it will bring in a lot and lot of opportunities for the digital businesses so transformation will happen via digital business so it is the backbone for enabling the digital business so this is the core agenda for the day. So we will be telling and sharing stories and inspire you guys to take IT as a career. So this is one thing which we wanted to uh, do by end of this talk. So uh, now let's put these things into perspective. We discussed about how IT will be used in different industrial ex industrial sectors. But now we wanted to think one step ahead, right? So how will the future of IT is going to be? What is going to be the next generation IT systems here? So what will be the expectations? OK, so let's imagine for a moment. right? So when we think about normal IT systems, typically we, uh, typically we will think about uh, Google search. We may think about interacting with a website or a mobile application, giving input information, and seeing some results. Right? But uh, let's imagine like this. right? So computing is universal. So it is ubiquitous, right? So maybe we even use Alexa and Google Home right now. So there is no user interface. We use voice as an input medium and do control. And then we maybe use our smartphone solutions to automatically monitor and control our surroundings as well. So all these are futuristic technologies, but they are no longer future. We are currently experiencing them. So similarly, we can see here that a lot of future IT systems should be having these set of features which are listed here. So they should be having predictive capabilities. So meaning, uh, if you keep on using Google Home, right? Google Home will always know at what time you will wake up. So maybe it sets an alarm routine for you automatically. Even if you fail to remember, it will have it will have the log where it says that okay, based on your historical patterns, you are you should be uh, you have a meeting at ten. Automatically, it feeds the data from the calendar and it schedules an alarm for you on your behalf. So these set of things should happen in future IT systems. So they must be predictive. So they should be performance focused. So meaning that uh, all all the uh, key business enablers should be having a performance metric in mind. So we will be discussing about this in future. But I would say, in short, we must build our futuristic, futuristic systems in a customer focused way. So we should start inward from customers and go outward. So we should make sure that all of our systems are scalable and robust, and of course, IT should be secured. So I will be spending a lot of time emphasizing on security. So security is something which is a big topic of contention, especially in Europe. In Industry 4.0, not just in Industry 4.0, but overall, right, IT security 
is going to be a huge, huge R and D area for businesses because businesses literally are putting in a lot of money and emphasis in storing customer data. So if data is the new oil, right, of the 21st century, if data is going to be stolen, it's a big breach. So all efforts should go in and we must ensure a stable security is being there for the future IT system. So this is the future global outlook for IT. So with that being said, right, we will talk about things which are happening currently here in Germany. So what is Industry 4.0? So this particular term or a buzzword, right? So this is something which is reverberating across all industries here. So Germany is a big, big industrial nation. So you have a lot and lot of product-based companies from here. So you have Bosch's, you have Siemens, and then you have BMWs of the world, Volkswagen, Audi, you name what. So basically everybody will have a big office here in Germany. So Production and manufacturing is something which is at the heart or the uh, epicenter for German people. So they do tend to improve these processes as they go on. So what they wanted to do is, right, so they thought how effectively software people are deploying solutions in the software world. They wanted to bring the same sort of efficiencies and same sort of best practices for manufacturing in the shop floor. So this is the whole idea behind Industry 4.0. Why not digital our entire business? Why not completely connect every machine and every 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 other um, controllers or sensors which we have to the internet and somehow control everything with the power of IT? So that's the theme behind Industry 4.0. So I will just talk about the briefly about the history and how we came here, right? So. Industry 4.0, they call this as fourth industrial revolution. But before that, we know that we had a lot of breakthroughs. So without that, this wouldn't be possible. So it's always good to revisit history. So a small, quick uh, brushing of things for us before we kick start. So we had a big revolution in the 18th century, right? So when Industry 1.0, that is when steam engine was coming into picture. So that is where we had the concept of cities slowly booming in. So we had railways, railroads established between different cities that allowed people to move in from one location to other location. So slowly people started building industries. So textile mills started coming in. So this served as a backbone for the rest of the industry revolutions. So this next one was mass production and mass assembly. So this came in during the 19th century when electricity was introduced. So this was the time when we have Thomas Alva Edison at one end and Nikola Tesla at the other end colliding with each other, whether AC or DC is going to power the world. But we all know the history that somehow AC became a dominant force. And then they, they started producing electricity as a means to produce more and further optimize the production line. So the next industrial revolution happened during 1970s. This was during the era of transistor and ICs. So when integrated circuits become a central piece when it became a dominant force slowly we started having microcontrollers microprocessors being developed which ultimately led to the emergence of supercomputers and normal microcomputers which we use so so with all that being said right right now we are ushering in the era of industry 4.0 so when i talk about industry 4.0 so just please have this sort of thing in your mind so why we say that industry 4.0 is different from industry 3.0 so what we are enabling is Somehow we are integrating all the pieces together and we connect them to a central repository called internet. So once you have internet in picture, all these devices are enabled and having an additional layer of intelligence. So they will be able to communicate with each other and they will also be able to be controlled and monitored to a centralized place. So somehow we wanted to have machine to machine communication, machine to human communication, and then M to X, so mission to everything. So basically, we wanted to connect everything with everything. I know this may sound like a, a oversimplification, but this is what exactly we are doing. So we wanted to establish a connection between the machine of choice to the one which we wanted to connect. So it can be anything which you wanted to connect. So cyber physical systems, what is cyber physical systems? If we break down that term, right, we see that cyber is nothing but like a cyborg thing. So maybe we create a systematic representation or a digital twin of that particular product which you wanted to connect and somehow integrate to the internet and make 
uh, prediction or make some simulations for that. So we will be discussing more about Industry 4.0. So don't worry uh, if these terms seems a little more alienated as we go on, right? So these will all come to make good sense. So now with that be out of the way, right? I would like to uh, invite my colleague Gayatri to discuss about the process for creating IT applications. Because what we will be doing is we will understand this process and we will see how we can completely translate these skills and apply this to manufacturing and for industry 4.0. Over to you, Gayatri. Thanks, Hari. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, I hope you had a very good overview of industry 4.0. Now it's time to deep dive into to understand the modern development methodologies that is being followed in current software industry. Uh, I'm really excited to share about uh, the real time overview of the modern development transformations that's being followed in the current software industry. So that you will get an idea about how these things are happening in software industry and what are the best practices being followed and what kind of uh, technologies we are being adapted in the current development process. As you all know, software today plays a vital role in almost every single sector of the world. As Harry rightly pointed out, you could see uh, if you take any business like healthcare, banking, or any e-commerce e business, you know, they have a some certain kind of a software to run their business. As you see, there are millions of software companies which is operating all around the world and they are constantly developing web applications, mobile apps, and software products for their customers. Uh, if you want to create a very good software product, you need to have a very good efficient process methodology, right? That's, uh, that's the topic we are going to discuss about. Uh, if you if we uh, see in olden days, like back in olden days, uh, what software people used to do, do is they used to follow a traditional methodology called waterfall model, which you all aware, which is similar to the SDLC process. Something you know people used to follow a linear approach, as you could clearly see from the diagram. Uh, these people from the software used to collect the requirements from the client once they get the requirement. What they usually do is they tend to design the system, then they develop the system, then they test the system. And finally, they go and deliver the software product as a bunch of one whole chunk to the customer. So this is what this is what's happening in the software industry in olden days. But that's not the case right now. If uh, let's say if the client is approaching the software industry, hey, I need a change in my requirement. Can you please adapt this change? This will not happen if we follow this waterfall process. So people in the software industry, you know, they tend to start thinking and they tend to uh, brainstorm for new ideas, how we can develop software uh, in a more efficient way. That's where they invented, invented a new methodology called Agile. You know, as you see, Agile is a, uh, one of the most e efficient software uh, software development strategy where most of the organizations now adapted this technology. If you are following Agile, it's like a new way of development strategy. You know, if you see from the diagram, you know, how iteratively the develop the requirement has been, you know, developed and at the end, how it is getting delivered to the customer in the form of smaller chunks, you know, this is the major transformation that happened in the current IT industry. More, uh, even in Germany, not only in Germany, all over the world, most of the IT industries now completely transformed to the agile transformation. So they tend to work on the lower chunks of the requirements and they do a constant deliveries. That's how the process is happening in the current industry. As you could clearly see from the pic picture, if you see, if you go for a waterfall model, the requirement is always fixed. but in the current scenario, it will not work at all. If you if you see the agile development, we have a requirement which is always variable. So if we get some change from the customer, we can easily adapt to our current system without disturbing the entire software. And the 
the advantages of agile processes like you know you can easily uh, adapt to the new changes and you can fast you can easily deliver the software solutions to the customer and you know you will have a very good interaction with the customer because you will be having a very good interaction on a monthly or a three months basis where the customer will know have an idea about how the software is getting transformed uh, now the now you got an idea about how the process is happening in the modern software industry so you have a chunks of software with uh, software uh, process with you so let's see how we can uh, convert this software processes into a real time software product so how we are going to develop a product in the next slide okay if you take any application if you take any application you know you can easily uh, break the application in the form of three different modules one is front end back end and the database layer if you look at the application like you know facebook instagram it might look simple at first glance but software application is something it's like a combination of various programming languages being developed by people with different skill set in the software industry so uh, people from different background you know who have very good expertise in different technology they tend to develop together and they integrate everything together and finally they transform this as a complete software product this is how the process is happening in the software industry the develop if you take a development process the first is like a, a front end model if you say as a front end developer you can you will be responsible for developing the the user interactive pages for the application as a as a front end developer your role is like you know to develop what the users the end users see and interact with the application if you see a modern application development uh, with respect to the front end methodologies you know nowadays people are more tend to uh, create a more interactive front end uh, fr front end uh, user faces compared to the static ones which we had in the traditional way and this is the role of the front end developer in each of the project if we see the back end technology you know front end is something i told it's like how how we get a look and feel about a website you know but back end is something it has like a nuts and bolts of the application if you if a website doesn't have a content it doesn't matter how good it looks or feels right so in the back end what we usually do is we usually write all the business logic and the security related functionalities and the data handling mechanism these kind of functionalities will be covered under this umbrella of backend development the other layer is called the db layer which is the database layer which is which act as a management system to hold all the data related to the application so it is like holding the heart of the software product which is called data uh, using this you can store and retrieve the data uh, of the application um, as i uh, can you uh, can you move on next slide yeah in the slide i have listed out on, uh, most of the modern technologies that is being used by the most of the companies here in germany as well as in all over the world so one interesting concept is the full stack development you know full stack is something it is like a superset of the front end as well as back end skills it's like combining these two skills why if you uh, if you see a full stack developer then he can able to develop the application single handedly so the biggest advantage of becoming a full stack developer is like you know you see the development from various angles you know as the full stack developer role in a project if he has a full stack skills then i could say he can easily handle the entire bandwidth of the application and according to the current demand full stack is the most demanding skill where every id industry is looking for as i said i started my career as a back end developer then i slowly realized you know uh, if i grow as a back end developer then i will not be able to connect the entire pieces of the application so then i slowly learned the front end technologies as well and then i groomed myself as a full stack developer now so if you you could see a lot of technologies here you know java python and kotlin these are the most widely used back end technologies by most of the software industries here as i could say java has you know it has been evolved evolved 
it's been 25 years now no, but still it is one of the powerful language now and kotlin is slowly coming into the market and uh, if you see sql mysql these skills are mostly needed for handling the backend uh, backend along with the data related technologies and if you see the front end we have lot and lot of very good frameworks like you know react js angular vue js if you develop these skills then you will become as a very good front end developer so as i would say in the current you know market the, the full stack is the most demanding skills that's how the industry that's what the industry is now looking for so it's better to choose the right technology and groom yourself so that you can see yourself as a very good developer uh, for the market needs let's move on to the next slide yeah okay yeah as i mentioned here here i will share my ideas of how new trends has been introduced in the back end development uh, in olden days what people used to do is you know they used to build a application in a very tightly coupled manner like you know they used to write business logic database logic and other server related logic inside a single application this is called a monolithic approach which is being dominantly used by the uh, traditional way of development now if you see the modern modern ways of back end development it is completely different you know uh, i will explain you a real time scenario say something if there is a issue happen due to you know there is a bug which got injected to your component or someone you know wrongly uh, uh, migrated the sql uh, sql queries so that you know if these these kind of scenarios always happens happens during the development or during the release phase but if you have if you come across this kind of any faulty update or this kind of any crash then we should not go and down the entire application right which will cause a very bad user experience you know for a single uh, small mistake you cannot go and down the entire software which is not at all acceptable in the current uh, current market field so in order to avoid this kind of technical drawbacks nowadays the most of the back end logic has been designed in the form of microservices based architecture as you could clearly uh, see from the picture uh, we have lot and lot of uh, you know uh, individual services has been developed in the form of loosely coupled services you know if you develop if you break the application logic in the form of individual services then you can you can easily you know uh, develop and deploy the application uh, and all your back end logic without you know depending on the other service the biggest benefit of decomposing this application into this individual uh, microservices is like you know you can independently deploy you no need to depend on the other developer you know you you do what you want you can easily maintain and test in, test your own code uh, let's let's move on to the other slide yeah here i have mentioned the uh, one real time example like you know if you take a e commerce application like you know this is how we used to you know design and develop the back end strategy like if i take a e commerce application then i will segregate all the order order related management as a separate service and delivery related uh, management as a separate service and user related management as a separate service then i will combine everything and then i'll deploy my code this is how you know we are developing uh, the back end structure in the current trend now and as i said mostly for the back end we use java kotlin kind of technologies you know you no need to write all the logic you know for for achieving this kind of microservices based technology there are some of the very good frameworks already available in market which i have listed down here like you know spring boot everything it it gives you a very good you know very good environment where you can easily you know focus only on the business logic the spring boot kind of framework it offers multiple uh, services where you can easily integrate and deploy your services individually and uh, using this microservices architecture so it's it's a it is you can independently deploy you can scale your application independently if something happens you can fail independently and it also supports very good support for uh, 
cross functional languages and you know and uh, the customer is really happy if something goes wrong then he doesn't want to shut down his whole application right and if you take amazon and netflix this is a, these are the very good real time examples you know we have close to 1000 to 5000 uh, microservices which is running for amazon uh, Amaz and for netflix which has close to 500 individual microservices so these kind of you know you know uh, it giants now easily you know uh, migrating their uh, back end strategy into the form of uh, loosely coupled microservice based architecture let's move on to the next slide yeah okay in this session we are going to cover the current most popular web, te web technologies and how the web development has evolved in recent times you know i would say <laughs> front end is like the charming part of the application you know the scope of the front end is like you know everything that user sees and interacts if you say back end you know that is completely hidden from the real world people do not know what is happening at the back end but front end is the something user will be interacting it and they 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 can interact using the browser in technological terms i would say front we we used to call this front end development as a client side programming that means what is happening in the browser so as i said back back end handles all the business operations and data related operation the role of the front end here is no we have to effectively handle the data back and forth between the uh, between the back end as well as front end so as a role of the modern front end developer i would see how effectively i can handle the data which is fetched from the back end and i can show it to the user let's see what are the main key components we need to consider while building a website in a more modern way the first one is like the most important concept is we, we should build our website in a more interactive form like as i said front end is something which is you know how we can connect with the people uh, which is more important right you know if you see the current facebook application compared to the one before 5 years you could clearly see how it has been evolved with a lot and lots of interactive features and is it is is one of the one of the most annoying website people used to hate a uh, few few years back but now it was more user friendly you know how these kind of you know user friendly uh, user friendly iterations has been developed with the help of new modern technologies like you know angular react and a uh, lot of uh, bootstrap uh, options are available in the market now so we can we can easily couple these to our application and we can make the uh, application as more interactive one the next main concept i would say is we have to make our uh, make our uh, application as a most responsive one as you say the responsive is something you know the layout the layout of the application should not change you know nowadays people you know usually they used to access the application more using their mobile than you know logging inside logging into the computer or desktop so uh, if you are developing a website then we have to consider the skill about uh, the responsive design which is one of the most demanding skills in the current market like you know the the skeleton of the application the layout of the application should not change whether you are opening it in a browser whether you are accessing it through your mobile that should not change that is one of the skill important modern skills that we need to consider because back in the history you know we developed the website using a lot of static text like you know old html css we have used but now that's not the case anymore we have to use a right technology and we have to make our uh, website more user responsive and a more interactive and more uh, user friendly one as i have mentioned lot of frameworks here which is being currently used by most of the companies angular react these are the most preferably used front end frameworks and we also have lot of uh, user friendly uh, languages like uh, typescript javascript where you can write all of the front end logics and we also have amazing package tools like you know yarn npm webpack you know if you are trying to use some fancy third party libraries to your application to make it even more fancy then you can easily you know incorporate it to your application using this build and package tools and let's move on to the next slide 
yeah in this slide you will get a high level architecture of how currently the front end framework is being developed uh, as i mentioned earlier in the back end we have many architecture patterns like you know microservices is, it is one of the widely used we we have soc a lot of architecture uh, similar way we also need to consider very good architecture while building a front end component and if we uh, if we are going for a very good architecture then we need to concentrate mainly on two things the first thing is like you know uh, how we design how how we design our front end framework you know uh, uh, by separating the logic and the views and the data binding you know as i mentioned front end has a role how, role like you know how it binds the data that is that it gets from the back end to the user so we have to clearly segregate all these models inter instead of you know uh, tightly coupled ones so as you see we have a app routing model so we have different different models like you know say user management model and one is like a, a checkout model and one is like a inventory model so we have to uh, you know segregate our front end components into different different model and this this architecture is called as component based architecture and where we mainly focus on reusing each and every components of the front end development so this is how we are segregating all the uh, similar functionalities and we used to decouple them and and segregate as individual modules as much as possible that's this is how we are designing the website the uh, front end components uh, in our company and this is the overall high, uh, high level architecture view how the front end framework is being developed in the current industry i hope you have a you had a very good overview of how it industry is currently working and what kind of technologies uh, that are being used uh, today and i will hand over to hari now All right. Uh, thank you so much, Gayatri. So we really appreciate you sharing a lot of insights and helping us understand how different frameworks and how different pieces of components work together to build a modern IT system. So we, we saw how uh, backend is primarily using microservices based patterns so that we, we can iteratively give more services because those philosophies and those methodologies will be the same thing which we will leverage for our industrial 4.0 setting as well. All right, so let's move on to the next, next slide. So currently I was giving an overview about what Industry 4.0 was all about. We saw the concept of IoT, cyber physical systems, and all other things. But before going on deep into what they are actually doing, right? I would like to point out and say that these are the current manufacturing trends which company wanted to focus on. Because uh, in this webinar, we also wanted you to give you some research direction and areas to pursue so that when you come to the job market, right? So if you focus on these areas, you will see a lot of companies hiring. So basically, this will enable us to accelerate our skill sets and easily go and position ourselves as an employable person. So. So these are the current trends from IT in manufacturing domain. So like I was alluding, right? So we will be collecting a lot and lot of data, guys, because uh, imagine Industry 4.0 is nothing without machines. So you will be having a lot and lot of machines in the shop floor. So for example, let's take my company, Honeywell. So in our company, Honeywell, currently we are manufacturing gas meters, smart gas meters. So we do have a lot of big machineries. We also have a lot of robots like KUKA, universal robots, and then different, different uh, collaborative robots, which are sending lots and lots of information. So we are logging them in a single whole data lake. So we will see how data lake is being built in the next slides. But just imagine one of the most important step for industry 4.0 is gathering machine data because without that we won't be able to build it systems or we won't be able to give value to our customers because it like i alluded right it should enable and it should accelerate and it should give value to the business that's the primary goal the rest of the pieces are the next stages so so we will be collecting a lot of machine data so that's the first step and the second step is since we have a lot of machine data right this is a very competitive industry so we should never let trade secrets go out right so for example so 
in honeywell we have proprietary technologies which we may use which we may which we may employ to have machine collaborating with each other sending using a special information protocol so we have to ensure that sort of machine data has been encrypted so so security iot security comes into picture here so we are actually experimenting with a lot of advanced technologies for example even blockchain is being used here so i know that uh, oneness has already conducted a, a workshop on uh, blockchain so we are empowering using technologies like hyperledger and ethereum and try to completely secure the data layer so that there is uh, a complete protection so that no information can leak out and like i alluded right so customization is other area where we wanted to improve on so especially um uh, manufacturing and automotive engineers right they are very very sensitive so by meaning sensitive they are a little bit tricky on what they want so you can't build a one side fit for all so for example right let's take an example of amazon so amazon interface is going to be the same one so you will be going to amazon you will have a filter at the top you may look for some categories like if you wanted to buy a dress or an electronic items or maybe you wanted to buy a sports sportswear or something like that so you have different categories and you go and you basically the interface is going to be similar but machine and um, basically the automotion automobile engineers right so they generally wanted to build their own stuff so they wanted to have full customizations they will say that you don't build dashboard for us you don't build an ui for us you just give us the ability to build ui so you you do all the groundwork for us we will customize it as per we need using your tool so this is how a product company should look like so you have to give uh, you have to think in terms of customer so that's 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 the first slide which we discussed right so you should be more customer focused you should be obsessive of customers so you have to give them full control so that they customize and cater to their needs extremely well so this is another area and the most important area is at the top that is the edge technology and sas platform SaaS platform is nothing but software as a service. Just think about like cloud. So I will be discussing about the differences involving edge technologies and cloud in detail just in a moment. Uh, but we we would say why edge is going to be the most important area of research for Industry 4.0, right? So generally, especially uh, in in the year 2016, 2017, right? So Europe brought a big regulation called GDPR. So basically, it's a Data Protection Regulation Act. So uh, basically, the main primary motto of that was to protect the data and rights of European citizens. So they were heavily penalizing companies like Google, Facebook, left and right, stating that you are actually using users' data and Without their permission, you are selling it to some other external third-party services. So the reason GDPR has been imposed is GDPR is not just applicable for humans, right? So it's also applicable for industries, and that means for machines. So machine data should also be securely protected. So again, so that's the reason we wanted to use edge technology here. So the idea of edge is nothing but edge computing or fork computing it allows the server forms to be installed directly at our site. So for example, so in the case of Honeywell, what people do is we have installed a lot of servers in our own form. So basically, so we all our application and all our databases are installed directly there. So we are not sending everything directly somewhere located in the cloud. So maybe it may be located in US or maybe in Europe somewhere or maybe even in Japan or China, but that allows that raises a lot of questions right so you may be asking questions about what if some hacker is coming and compromising it so what what about the latency issues so it's basically going across continents so we may experience latency problems here so all these things should be considered and that's the reason manufacturing is telling hey, hey so we wanted our data to be on the edge so even when you you are doing advanced analytics, right? We wanted our edge solutions to be equipped in a way to handle all these. So these are the uh, most important research areas. So now I will discuss in detail about the edge and cloud platform. So just in this slide, which we will focus on what is going to be the strategy which we will be developing. So what is a cloud, right? So this is again a question. So this is more of a philosophy. Basically, people will think about cloud as something which is there directly on the sky above us. But no, 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 that's just a <laughs> hyperbole. Uh, but uh, what exactly is cloud? Is Cloud is nothing but a big, big data centers, which is generating a lot and a lot of heats. And it's 
occupying like a big data warehouse so it's like a, imagine a warehouse setup guys so imagine you would have seen a lot of amazon data centers right so basically that is how the clouds of today looks like so you will basically deploy all the application all the full stack application somewhere inside one single rack may be located anywhere so what is going to be the strategy for us going forward is not just a public cloud or a private cloud so private cloud is nothing but edge so meaning you have the data center directly on site so you have installed it on your location on your premises so public cloud that means it's located somewhere else maybe in amazon's data center or in google's or microsoft but what industry wanted to do is right they wanted to build a hybrid approach so they wanted to you they wanted to bring the benefits of both the worlds together so they created a sort of a bridge in between so they say that all machine critical information regarding the machineries the robots they stay here but maybe some anonymized information maybe some extra factors that will be handed over to public cloud so this sort of a private public relationship this sort of hybrid model is something which i will industry 4.0 is sort of vouching for so they say that because we wanted to use the computing capability of cloud because in cloud you have the ability to have lot of resources so you can create a system having 200 tb of data and then uh, 100 gbs of ram just inside a minute right so that you can't buy and that you can't invest in your private so you have to bring the best of both worlds together so that's why hybrid hybrid solution is going to be the one going forward so naturally when we discuss about the development cycle right another important aspect of it is operations so all the applications which we build right if they are not properly deployed and if it's not properly accessible to the user then there is no way that they will be accessing our wonderful apps which we build so that is where we have hosting services like amazon web services microsoft azure google cloud salesforce oracle cloud and all these providers fundamentally they all provide the same solutions so they do they all have their own sort of terminologies per se but uh, don't worry about these but the concept is similar so all of them offer compute storage uh, and then distributed services so that they offer content so you host your application there so your users can access and they will be catered to cater to the needs so this is the cloud ecosystem which i wanted to just uh, touch base so now mo moving on to the important part here so this is where i'm going to discuss about the benefits of industry 4.0 so pay close attention here guys so we we realized that industry 4.0 will be needing the power of it so it is going to be a critical piece here so it is going to be a game changer here so we can't just bring in it and we can we can't go to some industry we can't directly walk into the campus of uh, honda or maybe somewhere a small 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 medium companies in india and say in germany we have this i4.0 so you use the same here and you will be having lot of values no so what we have to see is we have to first think about the benefits which we will have so what are the benefits of leveraging it technologies which we discuss and what are what will be the winning factors if we deploy it in our shop floor in manufacturing and automotive field right so the biggest biggest game changers is right i'm going to give an example here and i will say what what's going to happen so let's imagine bmw shop floor right so you are manufacturing lot of cars every day so you are producing car chassis so let's say that there is a small defect there so what generally happens in the assembly line is it will go to the assembly line it will it will start producing it and if it's a if it's a major defect the employee who is handling the assembly will be able to spot it on the spot and then it will be going to the it will be segregated and then it will be treated but if not right that defect will be overlooked and it in the testing phase we have to manually inspect and we have to spend a lot of resources resources to identify and see if a fault has happened but if you use these predictive capabilities and if you have a monitoring solution right at the edge right it will be able to find faults on spot so you save a lot of time and your, your operational efficiency increases so th by this way you can spot manufacturing defects right at the very earlier stage itself so this is a very big business benefit for people so imagine you spend a lot of resources testing and validating at the end so now that complete life cycle is going to be changed so you do do testing extensively at every single stage so manufacturing defects and then optimizing the operations and then most important thing is you can also do order forecasting because you are getting machine data right so you do get information about every single machines at a regular basis 
so you you are literally lying on a huge data lake so you will be able to say that this machine is operating from 9 to 5 or 9 to 8 at this particular operational efficiency so if it is running at the same rate the expected output is going to be these many pieces so you will be able to forecast your demand accurately by this means so these sort of business benefits right will accelerate the growth of the company so that is the reason manufacturing industry they wanted to use it so they wanted to somehow improve their process they wanted to make more revenue they wanted to save additional cost so remember operational if operational efficiency is increased right chances are that they won't run for an extra shift so basically personally in our company we are currently investing to how to optimize our production in such a way that we avoid night shift so there is no necessity for night shift so basically in two shift we wanted to cover everything so that is how we we do a lot of these sort of experiments to see if we can somehow build more efficiency and decrease the uh, you know um, decrease the amount of time the entire shop floor is being used so these are the sort of business benefits which we wanted to increase through industry 4.0 so here you can see on the left part that uh, we start from the asset so asset is the physical layer let's say a machine so it can be any machine a normal robot or a normal microcontroller so we wanted to connect that to internet, right? So it's not just internet, it may be intranet. So basically within the shop floor, not to the public internet. So you use a edge device. So edge devices are primarily small computer or a server. So for example, Raspberry Pi can be used as a proper edge device, or you can use NVIDIA Jetson Nano. So you have a lot of options. So using that, you connect your asset, and then you start collecting every information from that asset so whatever the operational signals it is producing the fault signals and then the uh, timing signals so all these data will be accumulated and we build everything into the data lake so once we build everything into the data lake then we can start doing data science run some algorithms and see how effectively these are running so you will be able to find out patterns so you will be able to say that every morning after we start the machine it takes around five minutes for the devices to operate operate at full capacity. So we, we can think about how we can improve the lead time. So we can say that if we somehow manage to uh, run, run the production under two seconds, two minutes to the full capacity, then the overall cycle time to produce this particular piece can be reduced by 10%. So this is a big win for the business as a whole. So you can identify key performance indicators and track them here. And finally, you can do some advanced analytics. So you can say that uh, with this particular case, you, you manage to save this much time and you can make a presentation to the leadership team and convince them that this particular change will save or increase the profitability of the business by X amount of sum. So this is how we will be using Industry 4.0. And finally, the end goal is the complete digital transformation. So what happens is if we are a supply, if we are a supply chain based business, right? So we are completely digitalizing our business end to end. So the 360 degree view of the business, whatever is happening, that's being recorded digitally. So from the procurement of materials to the dispatchment and delivery, we have all the data collected and tracked on a regular basis. So with this, what happens is if you are a, a logistics company like DHL or FedEx, right? So you will be able to plan or reroute your capabilities because you have every information and every location, locational data available on your hand. So fully digitalize your business and harness the revenue. That is the motto of Industry 4.0, okay? So now I wanted to give some real applications of where uh, and, uh, and fields where we can contribute right now. So as you can see, right, Industry 4.0 presents a lot of uh, exciting use cases. So you have autonomous robots. Autonomous robots are nothing but self-driving cars. So you know that self-driving cars is currently a thing right now. So the companies are really, really making a lot of progress here. So you have Tesla completely managing to uh, deliver on self-driving cars. Waymo is doing a really good job. And of course, the other automotive giants are following suits. But self-driving cars can be made even more better and secure. So research is going on aggressively there. And you also have AR and VR, so augmented reality. So this is something which everybody wanted to do. So remember when I uh, discussed earlier, right? 
IT applications may not be just web or may not be just mobile applications, right? It can be an extension of us. That is where AR and VR comes in. So imagine walking out with a Google Glass and you are able to see what's happening in a machine. Just like an Iron Man, you will be able to integrate and you will be able to uh, interact with every component directly and see what's the optimal performance of this plant or what is the emails which you got or all these crazy ideas. And then also IT is being playing a role in additive manufacturing. So in 3D printing, when you do process the STL files and when you wanted to make it available across multiple devices, you have to somehow use a lot of backend programming. So if you wanted to involve in a, you know embedded or if you wanted to work more on automotive cars and building software for automotive cars in vehicle to a vehicle communication. Primarily, I would say uh, programming languages like C and C++ still plays a dominant role because that is where we can run optimizations because high level languages like Java and Python, they don't offer uh, the ability to work on memory level. So performance and latency becomes a very big uh, time sensitive things when we work in embedded and machines. So it's very good to have a strong foundation on C and C++. So that's where I wanted to say. So these are all the areas. And of course, IoT, cybersecurity, I have emphasized a lot and lot on cybersecurities. And the important part is simulation. So imagine what we generally do in um, real life use cases, right? So for example, this use case was done in Volkswagen company. So Volkswagen is a very big car manufacturing company. So what they do is if they are making a change in their production plan, right? For example, they plan on, you know, use assembly line four instead of assembly line three. What they do is they have a simulation software. So they know that how many resources or how many work centers are being deployed in that particular assembly line. So they do run a simulation in their digital twin. So it will be almost a replication of reality. So they will do a forecasting, okay, in our digital twin, this particular time and in this particular day, the production was completed in two hours time. So they will be, that prediction will be very, very accurate. So instead of making some costly resources change in reality, they will first test in simulation and then they will come back and deploy the same in reality. So these sort of advantages are the current trends and current applications for industry 4.0. Okay. so. Last but not least, I wanted to cover a few aspects of big data because anything and everything which we do right now, right? If we wanted to bring more value to industry, the best way will be to understand and analyze machine data. So we wanted to somehow say that companies who are investing extreme amount of money and resources in buying costly equipments or procuring costly equipments, right? If we say that by using these sort of data analysis from the machine data, we can say when that machine is going to fail, they will really, really value the end product. So they will be very happy to see the exciting possibilities which we can bring with IT technologies to the manufacturing domain. So, so basically we are working with big data here. So like I mentioned, a particular machine, I will give you a real example here. So this was in a, a, a production plant in BMW. So for one particular assembly robo, right? That robo is generating around three gigabytes of data in a span of 10 seconds. So this includes video data, signal data, and then some other noisy information which are being absorbed as well. So you have a low, huge volume of data coming to you. So it can be, it's not just a structured data, right? You have video, audio, so it's coming from a different, different variety. And it's also coming at different speed. The video may come at a different speed and then the audio may come at a different speed. So the velocity is also important. So you have to somehow be, uh, able to work with all the six Vs in a concurrent manner to produce very good results. So this is just the overall view of big data, but uh, we may cover everything in depth later on and later point in time. So I wanted to just highlight a few technologies here. So the best way to work with big data is to go the open, open source route. So a lot of technologies which Gayatri was mentioning, right? So Angular, ReactJS, and then Spring Boot. So all these projects are currently an open source project right now. So the biggest advantage of going by open source is companies will generally look for higher open source talent because they know that people 
can build expertise by looking and uh, learning from online so there are multiple resources available just at our fingertips for all the mentioned uh, technical stack so we may be able to get information by referring the documentation and we will be able to build products so there are few technologies here which i wanted to highlight for working with big data that is hadoop spark and then kafka so these technologies will allow you to run this big data workloads across multiple machines so this will enable us to work and process everything in a parallel distributed way so that your computer doesn't become struck and then doesn't go down so this avoids the crashing or failure of applications so you we have to work in a decentralized way so that is where we use these sort of technologies together and finally it's very important to use business intelligence tools to show that this is how the production run looks like so make some beautiful visualization charts and graphics using tableau power bi and click view or even python and just use go the open source way and show some visualizations so this is the uh, big data stack and finally we wanted to conclude by talking about the successful success to determine it projects so generally when we wanted to deliver value to customer right it is a field which will transform everything so software is eating every sector so this was a statement given by the great mark anderson so please please uh, please go away with the take away that it will be definitely a strong force in your business it will definitely be an accelerator so think strategically and then build a product which can be trusted and take ownership and then deliver application which is of value to customers so uh, with that said i really thank everybody for attention so i will also uh, invite my colleague guy three to give a few words before we say goodbye thanks hari i hope you had a very good clear idea about how industry 4.0 works and modern technology is being used in, by the software industry the see the field of software services is considered to be one of the most secure field in industry even during this pandemic time it is creating unlimited opportunities as you see it is rapidly growing and ever booming field in the market so you need to learn and learn and upgrade your skills based on your interest i hope definitely you will find a lot of opportunities in software market once you upgrade your skills i wish you all the best and stay safe if you have any queries please contact my email i am happy to answer all your question thanks hari and thanks onus solutions for this wonderful wonderful opportunity yeah thank you again everybody so like guy three pointed out right feel free to reach us via our email or maybe via our linkedin account as well so we would be very much happy to answer your queries and if you wanted to work on some, some real time projects and get exposure right so we would also be helpful and give you some ideas on what to work on to get accommodated accommodated with the technology so we really thank onus technologies daranya and then yogesh for giving us this opportunity and thank you shrinidhi for the wonderful introduction so if we have some time we can take some questions yeah Gayatri and uh, Hari, we'll just wait for uh, about five minutes so that if we any question arises, we would answer it, or else we'll yeah, uh, the session. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, absolutely, Dharan. Yeah. Okay, so I think uh, everybody is clear with the topic, and uh, I hope they would connect you uh, through mail or through LinkedIn. And uh, I now, I, now I invite uh, Shrinidhi to deliver the vote of thanks. Yes, ma'am. 
it was a very great informative session with a lot of insights sir and ma'am thank you for a wonderful session and sparing your precious time with us ms gayatri and ms hari and i also thank all the participants for being at att attentive and interactive throughout the session to have more informative webinar session subscribe to our youtube channel please thank you thank you so much uh, uh, thank you hari and uh, thank you gayatri uh, thank you yeah, yeah thank you all thank you all for tuning in we really appreciate it thank you all